welcome to Social Policy. And I normally would be presenting from the lands of the Awabakal people, but I'm currently in Sydney and uh, I'm presenting, I'm hotspotting from my hotel. So I'm from the lands of the, I think it's the Darug people. And if somebody wanted to correct me, I would be more than happy to be corrected. And it's, that's a very relevant thing to uh, to say as well, because it be, it's be, you probably noticed that it's become very normal now in, uh, and I haven't got my camera on, in, in state government and instrumentalities and many other organisations that we acknowledge the, the traditional owners and custodians of the lands on which we are meeting. And if any of our participants are Aboriginal, we certainly uh, welcome their participation tonight. And, and really, yeah, look to people for for their insight, um, their particular insight. So this week we really wanted to look at you know, what is social policy? And what I'm really trying to do uh, is make this relevant to your work so that it's something that is meaningful to you. And hopefully, hi, Jade meaningful to you and you can see how it will actually help you in you, your work. So first thing we'll ask is what is social policy and, and how do these policies impact on your work in the community uh, services? So I'm assuming that everybody is working in the community services and yeah, no worries. All good. We've only just started, Jay, because we were getting people uh, all online. This being week, excuse me, week, week one. But the first thing I just wanted to check is everybody has done their, excuse me, ACE New South Wales Academic Integrity module uh, for this year. Uh, that's compulsory and it just takes you through how we deal with academic integrity in case. Uh, um, sh sure, I won't have any problems with, with any of you, but yeah, I, we really need to go through this and I go through it as well, just as a reminder to me about how we, yeah, how we manage making sure that we are citing our own work. The, the key thing about that is, is that if you, if if you found something that's really good, I want you to share it because I learned from you as well. And so you actually would get more, um, you, you get more credit when you actually cite something rather than uh, not citing out something and unintentionally or intentionally, I'm sure it wouldn't be intentional, coming across as your own work. So what I'm really looking for in this, in this course is people that actually cite. And why is that? Because it, you're justifying what your position is. And it's not just your thoughts, you can you can back it up. And as I said last week in the orientation session, I don't particularly care what particular position you hold on some of the big picture issues or, or theoretical or philosophical issues that are right, related to the way in which social policies are developed and created and what sort of assumptions assumptions lay behind them. I'm just more interested in the fact that you can develop an argument rationally and logically and you can justify it and back it up with citations from the literature. But what, what, is, what is the big picture? And look, I'll also just stress that I, I do go through and check the um, Moodle links and I so uh, try and look for spelling mistakes or anything like that. So if you do spot something, please let me know. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, I, I really appreciate that. So if there's a link not working, please let me know because the links change regularly. In my experience, uh, one of the worst <laughs> for changing links without knowing are uh, United Nations uh, organisations. Uh, and I, uh, yeah, they, they will change something just at the top of a hat. So what's been there may have been, been there for a long time, all of a sudden can disappear. So if, if from week to week it, it, you see something that's not working or don't quite understand, yeah, please don't hesitate to 
uh, come back to me. Grace, did you have a question? Uh, and thanks for yeah, putting Will, your hand up. since the forum posts are part of an assignment, will you be providing feedback to tell us if we're on the right track? In in the forum posts? Uh, yes, but kind of like, you know, gently. Um, I don't want to come out and say, hey, you know, that is wrong. I, I'll probably give a different perspective. Um, but I'll try um, I'll try and do that in a way that's not em embarrassing. That's a bit of a subtle thing. Um, so I might just, you know, technically suggest, well, you know, have you thought about this as well? And just to kind of like orientate you because we don't want to stifle what's in the chat. And when you, when you chat, yeah, you, you put it yourself out there a little bit. So I'm not going to, so I, you know, jump on anybody if they, yeah, if they if they're wrong, I'll, but but also in another sense, um, I my my training is in sociology, so in sociology, if you've studied that, we kind of like avoid right and wrong type of approaches. Often it's 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 a combination of different factors. So oftentimes there's no strict right, there's no strict wrong. It's it's something. Well, or if there is, we're open to interpretation. So that's how we approach things. It doesn't mean to say that there's not a universal truth or reality, but we, we try and mediate that term, if I can put it that way. And in the posts, yep, I know people have started posting. That is fantastic. Uh, it's changed a little bit this year, the team, so I'm trying to figure out myself a little bit. So I have made some, some comments. Just just a couple of points I've noticed. Don't forget to put your name uh, in the chat when you or when you sorry when you make a post. Sorry, it's not so much in the chat because we see that one. Don't forget to put your name and also um, if you're citing something, if you if you kind of like we prefer your own words, but if you if you grab the block of text or something to answer a question, just put it in quotation marks, and that's the context in which we might uh, you might cite it because I. You know, I, I don't, um, I know what you're saying, um, what you, uh, but just put it in quotation marks so that we know where it's come from. And, and that's good because I can pick up really good resources from year to year because I, because of where you work and, and you can refer to documents and things like that. So in the chat, feel free to use your own words, try and obviously have good spelling and good grammar because it's all writing and, and um, it's all practicing your writing and your analytical skills. So I'm teaching you, hopefully teaching you how to look at policy, understand where it's come from, understand how it's developed, understand who implements it and understand how it affects the recipients, your, your clients. And also bring this back to you in the work that you do in your, in, in your jobs. And I'm assuming that you work in the community services or wish to work in the community services. So, for example, and I, I mentioned this last week, if you at some stage in your career, the chances are you will be asked to help write a submission. And that might be a submission to an inquiry, which is what we focus on in this subject, because policy is often your chance to influence policy is through what is often called an inquiry. There's a problem and the government wants to look into it, find out what people are saying about it, and then ask for submissions. And then the submissions are all studied and evaluated. And then a new set of policy is recommended, which the government may wish to implement or for example, in the case of the Royal Commission into Black Deaths in Custody, which happened 30 years ago, not implement at all. So it's it's a uh, yeah <laughs> that's uh, yeah how policy, but oftentimes it is implemented. So that's how policy in relation to an inquiry is often developed, or it may be not something so grand. Grant, you may be asked to write a submission for funding. And in that case, you will know which policies to cite, where you can find statistics to back up the funding submission that you are making. So 
it has that type of uh, has anybody in a, been in a situation where they've had to write a, a funding submission you can put your hand up or have a comment in the in in the chat has anybody ever made a submission to an in inquiry no um and yeah don't hesitate to put your hand up or make a comment in the chat if if you like um i don't want to be necessarily talking all the time um, and i'm not here to deliver on high received wisdom and in these workshops um are uh, excellent yeah no that that's really that's really good uh, that you uh, feel confident enough to do that uh, i often i find myself often writing submissions i'm writing one at the moment uh, because of uh, the barbs that i go to uh, we're trying to protect it and we're wanting to have a heritage order put on it to stop it being redeveloped uh, and if it's redeveloped what they want to do probably is put a restaurant on top of it and if they put a restaurant on top of it it'll be very expensive and it's mostly poor people and working class people who go to these baths that I go to so we don't have a situation where people at expensive restaurants are looking down on the barbs and yeah making it a, an uncomfortable place for people so that's an example of a submission that's i'm writing at the moment okay it's not directly social policy but that it is it's accessible swimming for the people that is free now just to look at the slide here the big picture so this is a quote from our text from a novel called Erskine and what I know look you can read it but I'll just I'll just point out right just some of the key words that I've highlighted when, when we talk about social policy we're mainly talking about policies that refer to well-being or welfare of people that's the key thing does that sound reasonable because yeah Anybody want to say, give me a thumbs up or disagree um, to, or agree? Because that's how you distinguish it from um, defence policy or economic policy or um, all these other big picture policies. Social policy normally refers to welfare. Um, Welfare being welfare, or well-being, it comes in the context of social, political, ideological, and institutional factors. And, and we'll be looking about that. And what that means is that well, various institutions have an impact on welfare and well-being is presented and developed and what lies behind that are social and economic forces who's got the money who doesn't want to give the money who wants to make sure the money is allocated for example so they're all part of what is part of this big picture and, and all of that of course influence uh, how how fair how social welfare policy, for example, are produce, produced and, as it says, they're distributed and consumed. In other words, now that's very technical, sociological talk, but it's uh, it's all related to, uh, like it says there. Um, yeah, well, no, the no, that's a really good point, Grace. Um, so it's, it's it would also include the laws because often the laws seek to and you could say narrowly speaking that's the legal framework in which a social policy exists but there might be a policy on on having um domestic violence programs for example shelters i was at a meeting this afternoon that's why i'm in sydney where i heard from a caseworker that the government of New South Wales spends one spent one billion dollars last year, one billion dollars 
in providing temporary accommodation for 500 children in the state. One billion dollars. Wow. I mean, uh, that's just an example. So uh, there are there are policies that the state government says, right, OK, uh, women and children are a priority and we need to find them accommodation. But you kind of like wonder about a policy uh, where they're spending a million dollars, a billion, a billion dollars on it. So, um, you, so then you're asking me. So, so we have a policy, and then the laws would be a reflection of the policy. But they can be also out of kilter. I mean, sometimes the legislative framework, the laws that back up a policy, can be in, out of sync. Um, and OK, would the policy be legislated? Well, policies aren't so much legislated. They're, they're, they're developed. They're, they're on, not often laws. They're, they're kind of like, OK, this is the way in which an institution will carry out its business, like a government ministry will carry out its business. They will be following these particular guidelines, which are in the policy document. Oftentimes, the legislation will reflect. So domestic violence legislation will say that domestic violence is a crime, for example. Um, but, 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 but that's another aspect of the policy and it is related to the law and the laws behind it. And, and that also related to, to legal implications and who can be processed within the criminal system. So I wouldn't necessarily narrow it down that um, the policies legislated or the policies developed and implemented may go into an act of parliament and may become a law um, or the act of parliament may just say, OK, we're well, going to make this amount of money available for uh, housing, for example. Uh, and then, well, the funding request uh, that may depend very much. Welcome, uh, Jean, Christophe. Hi. Okay. Hi. Thanks. Hi. Thanks, Sean Christophe. We're sorry that you were not able to get in and congratulations for finding your way in. I'm just giving some uh, introductory remarks about the um, about the workshop this week. Have we lost participants? Has anybody have people? No, no, everybody's still there. Um, so I'm I'm just um, um, continuing yeah continuing on so um so there's a definition and all i've talked about this week so far jean christophe is or you can say your name how do we say how to pronounce your name my apologies uh, jean christophe most people just call me jc okay jc thank you for that and i'll just um yeah, just to pick back through the slides. Okay, that's introduction. I'm just reminding people to do the academic integrity model. There was a question about posting. I'm sorry for talking too If it's fast. been done, do we need to do it again? Sorry? If we've already done the integrity model, do we need to do it again? Uh, no, if you've done it for this year, okay. that's great. But you need to do it for each year. Yeah, you need to do it. Okay. okay. I, I just say, I, I do it as well. Okay, each year. Just a good reminder because things change. Uh, right, and just, just kind of like moving on. So if you have any questions about what social, yeah, that's kind of like a definition, right? Uh, what the study is, but you could look at various definitions of, of social policy. Um, if you wanted to know different ones, yeah, let me know and I'd be happy to I'll give you a good source. I've just got to lean over and grab, uh, oops, just, just grab, the textbook, which is on the screen. Uh, I said in the orientation session last week, um, you can probably maybe see that. Okay, that's a copy of the textbook. It is available. You can get copies through the library, but it's also available electronically. And so you will see there's a link in the Moodle. I try and put links as close as possible to the part of the uh, textbook that I would like you to read in preparation. But that's it. But it's available electronically through the library databases. And I'm assuming everybody has a TAFE username and password, which is usually what you need to access the database. So 
It's a great text, right? Okay, as I said last week, it um, well, it uh, I think it ref it'll still refer to Scott Morrison, right? So Scott Morrison was the prime minister, and I'm sure they're working on a new version of the textbook book now, uh, which will be referring to uh, the current prime minister, Anthony Albanese. But you know, by the time it's um, it's printed and published, well, who knows? Um, uh -huh. we're, in a, we're, we're in a country which had five prime ministers in five years, so hey, it's hard to keep up. But oftentimes, things don't change that much between different political parties. They oftentimes keep many of the same policies. Um, so, well, even though it's often Scott Morrison, um, there are many of his policies which are still uh, being implemented. Which, for example, the stage free tax cuts, which have been announced uh, recently. They're an implementation of a policy that was first introduced by Scott Morrison, albeit with some changes. So there's a good example of a policy change. That's a taxation policy, which obviously impacts on social policy because it impacts on people's living standards and how much revenue a government has to fund social welfare programs. Yeah, that's it. Um, Linda, you can you can download a certain number of pages. We ask you not to download the whole book because that can block access to other people. And you can also read it online um, as well. Um, so you now what are what are some of your personal experiences of social policies now uh, i see people have made some some great uh, contributions in the in the moodle uh, many of you have pointed out that um centrelink payments are important and we all receive centrelink payments at one stage or another during our lives that might be Family, the family payment, or it might be a childcare subsidy, uh, it might be an unemployment benefit, it might be a sickness. You, but you know, you know all of that. Uh, but some policies have a bigger impact than others. Right? I am fortunately one of those people who had free university education pretty much well all the way through. So much, uh, and Hex was introduced. Um, to start to make people pay for the education that they were previously receiving for free. So that's a social policy. Anybody wanted to just but uh, add something? How it might be impacting in your work? Any ideas there? Put something in the in the um, in the team chat, for example. Anybody work in justice? Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, that would be a great idea, writing a submission. Unfortunately, that if you find an inquiry that's underway, you go for that, right? Um, because you've got a real issue there, and that um, uh, hex is uh, pegged. So the interest that you pay uh, increases uh, because it's um, tied to, in, it's, well, it's actually in, increases each, each year. If nothing else, you could at least be paying back what you originally accrued rather than having to pay interest on the loans. Uh, JC, you had a comment on this? Um, yes. So... Um, I'm not sure which state it's currently implemented in, but I think it's in ACT and Victoria, and it's coming into New South Wales. Um, but um, the government believed that um, drug use um, invariably is going to happen in the social context. And police were obviously stopping everybody, you know, and searching them and then going, ah, oh, we found, you know, you know, one point of drugs on you, put them to the drugs, put them to the courts, and they then get a criminal record, and that was them stopping them getting jobs, applying for accommodation. So they obviously changed the reform and said, well, police now, if it's under a certain amount, should give you like a $400 fine, and that's it. 
so that yeah. obviously then yeah. it doesn't impede on their um, ability to get work um, um, or, or, you know, or get housing or, um, you know, which is fundamentally, um, you know, building blocks for a stable economy, which yeah, I think no, was that, a really good idea. Yeah, that, that's a great idea in many countries around the world. Uh, it is um, recreational drug use, in particular uh, cannabis, has been legalised in Portugal, uh, I think Uruguay, uh, a few other countries, and uh, it just keeps people out of the criminal justice system. What a terrible waste. Um, and we do have a week on social policies and, and the arguments for that are put for and against uh, why it is um, yeah, an important policy to to change. We have there, it's um, yeah, never been really logical. Uh, and we have there a good example of where the policy and the legislation and the laws are a bit out of sync. And there is oftentimes a considerable margin for you know, a certain amount of le le leniency to actually, yeah, be, be, be applied. However, and um, yeah, it's very much at the whim of the government of the day. And, and look, and the other, other terrible thing, which I'm sure you're all aware, is that uh, these you know, drug laws are mostly used against working class people and Aboriginal people. That's um, uh, in particular in cannabis, whereas uh, when they did the, when they did the, um, when they test the waters, the sewage in from high income areas, I won't say which ones, but I'm sure you'll all be all aware, um, rich people, in other words, or better word off people, high social economic, however you want to put it, a lot of cocaine use uh, is indicated by the measuring of the sewage outfall. So that really, um, yeah, really says, but where, where are the most of the drug convictions? In poorer communities against uh, you know, Aboriginal and uh, disadvantaged communities in working class areas. So mm, there's a bit of a kind of like a, um, well, um, um, certain certain assumptions there. So good, there, there's some good examples, and, and and I'm sure that impacts on your work in the community services. Right now, we can now we've got a better chance of finding your home or finding your job or, or um, yeah, yeah, good point, yeah. And so, so they can't afford the coke, and they um, yeah, and, and they use um, yeah, they use more dangerous drugs, uh, dangerous and addictive, and and potentially destructive. Um, right, so and I've, I've touched on this already, and we'll be looking at this sort of thing. So when you go for the readings for your textbook this week, uh, you will, yeah, you you'll pick up some of these factors a little bit more more depth. Um, just on the readings, look, I try and keep it to thirty pages, uh, twenty to thirty pages, because the the set reading for the Moodle for uh, for for the workshop and the Moodle. And also there are readings within the Moodle and at the end of each week's Moodle, you'll find a bibliography. Now, I'm, I'm not expecting you to read every single link that I provide in the Moodle. That's just there for you to explore if you wish. If you are interested in particular issues such as mental health or, or drug policy or tax reform, things that we've already touched on this evening, well, you can click on the link. And I try and keep those links up to date. And if you find something that's better, hey, please let me know. And I would certainly be interested in perhaps including it in the Moodle, because I'm always trying to, to update that content. So yeah, don't feel, a, don't, I'm not asking you to read those, but at least click so you know that it's there and, and what it is, uh, what it's about and, and 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 it's trying to support yeah the argument that I'm presenting in the text of the Moodle. So yeah, but also keep in mind there's yeah you know, there's certain expectations on the amount of of reading that you do in preparation uh, for the each week. So that's what that's there for. And the reference list is a good example of a of, of a um of, of how the references should be done in APA seven, which is what we are using. 
Oh, there, look, there it is. You can, you can read the screen. I, I won't read it all out to you, but a lot of different factors. Okay, and we've already touched on on some of it as well. Can you give me an example of a, and it's in the text uh, in the Moodle. What, what's 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 an external factor that's influenced um, our social policy? What is something? Okay, any anybody got an example? COVID nineteen. Uh, yeah, that's certainly right. That was an external factor. All of a sudden, you know, when was it? You know, we started to hear about these. Um, 2019. Yeah, thank you. Um, a few of us, our minds went back that we'd been around a little bit longer to SARS, thinking, oh, is Merge. it going to be the same as SARS? Um, and MERS as happened. well. What was that one? Sorry, BERS. MERS. The, uh, the, the avian flu or something. Yeah. Yeah, um, no, exactly, right? All of a sudden, bang, something, and that all of a sudden we're in lockdown, um, social welfare policies changed, and, and yeah. Uh, another example where there's the, 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 the different ways in which different sections of the population were policed, who had the lockdowns in, in force and, and didn't. So, uh, can you think of any other inter international issues that it's in? Impacting on how policies are developed at the, the moment. The global global economics. Yeah, exactly right. What's that being influenced that influenced by at the moment? Uh, uh, housing. Yeah, the yeah, wars. Housing is wars. Yeah, unfortunately, we got a lot of those. The, the yeah. Trump and and the American election. Mm. Oh yeah, and that's creating a whole lot of concern Fox too. News. <laughs> What sorry? Fox News. Oh yeah, well yeah, yeah. Well we don't we don't deal with media policy specifically. No. But that that's but media that's does have media does have a lot of um a lot its role to play in influencing people. Yeah, exactly. And I think um I think it's no, next week I'll talk on that. Um, um, yeah, like they'll think one of the inquiries that's underway at the moment. That, that, that I could be wrong, but it's on media. There's a there's a currently an inquiry into way in the influence of the Murdoch media on on uh, well, I guess the way in which policies are developed in Australia because Murdoch had a lot of say on what what, what social policies are in. Well, attitudes to welfare recipients. For example, you read the Fox News, the Sky News, you'll find a lot of, uh, well, a lot of stereotyping of 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 of, of disadvantaged people. Uh, I don't want to repeat any of those because, yeah, you kind of like those. So, yeah, a lot of different factors. Um, technology's changing stuff. Uh, I was talking to somebody yesterday. Like, you heard of AI, or of course you've heard of AI. Yeah. Um. I was talking to someone yesterday, a, a young guy, and he was developing a, a, he's a social entrepreneur, and he was trying to develop a startup which would help uh, op shop. And uh, you might have a bit of an idea how uh, artificial intelligence works, but basically uh, this was going to help op shops automate their processes. So if they have a wardrobe, it can access a uh, good point raise it can access you know what, what what has been sold previously in the market on a particular item of furniture what's um yeah and and recognize automatically uh, its value and then put a price on it that's competitive so that they can raise uh revenue uh, so op shops can raise revenue more automatically and that they're going to have more realistic pricing, which is automatically set and content that's generated. So people can look, uh, if needs be, on a website or go into the shop and the, and, and the person serving, who's often a volunteer, can actually know quite quickly, uh -huh, this is the price that, that we set. And that's done by AI. Oh, that was the plan, right? It fell through. But that's, that's a really interesting way in which... Um, a technology can impact on 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 service provision. If you work for an institution that gets a lot of its income from op shops or some of its income from op shops, that's that's um yeah that's just one little uh, example. And yeah, well, yeah, well, AI generated images. Well, 
I, what also AI can do is analyze an image and understand it and describe it and, and do all that sort of, yeah, it's just quite amazing. Um, and yeah, and that, yeah, that the whole, the whole way in which, yeah, deserving and undeserving poor, which ultimately that, that, that's a 19th century concept, which is, yeah, and we'll go into that in future weeks. Yeah, how social welfare developed is often due to historical factors. But hey, I, I um, move it along. Um, some of you have got other classes to go to at um, at eight o'clock. Um, service providers, well, yeah, you're familiar with all of these too. Uh, you probably you may work for one of those. Uh, famous Centrelink is there. And I've, I've already talked about charities. It may be related to a. Um, an op shop, crisis services, and, and state and government uh, instrumentalities and institutions. Uh, moving, uh, and, and also, well, there's some of the on the risk, hopefully, on, on the receiving uh, end. So, and, and we know all of these. Uh, we've mentioned tonight victims of, of um, is that the right word, victims of, uh, of domestic violence? Um, Sometimes I'm careful using the word victim because it can be um, disempowering and objectifying. But it's, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Linda, survivors of domestic violence. So that's a good example of how I need to be corrected. You work in the industry. You um, you will know the, um, you know the terminology. Uh, so thank you for that uh, correction. Um, and now, okay, well, I'm not, I'm not, going to teach to the assessment task, but I will just point out the first one that's, um, in other words, I won't be telling you how to do this every week, right, um, how to do the assessment, but I, I will refer to it, but I won't be all focused on this. But look, I'll put it there. You can you can read that. Um, it's in the subject guide. I just point it out and, and you can note there, I've tried to, well, you're, you're manager. Right. So think of the think of it this way. You you you're at work. There's a whole lot of media on a particular issue. That's where your organisation works in. And there's now going to be an inquiry, and uh, this potentially or impact on your work. And you know your boss says, "Hey, I want you to go away and look at what's been produced." And you, being a TAFE student, you have access to your um the databases. And you can do a search on the library catalog, on the databases. Try and avoid Google. Uh, you, you, if you're going to use you, Google, use Google Scholar. Um, and then go back. And if you find a good reference, find the actual, if it's not on Google Scholar, or find the actual reference. And oftentimes they will be within the TAFE databases so that you can develop your research skills. Why? Because I want you to come up with good quality documents that you can use to develop your position. The problem with a text, as I've already pointed out, it gives good background information, but doesn't necessarily, that by the time it's published, it's already going to be a couple of years out of date because you know, it has to be written, and then it has to be published, and then it has to get out, and it has to be sold, and it has to be taken up and used in a course. So, yeah. So that's why the databases are good, are good because they can actually give you quick and relevant, yeah, up-to-date information. But I'll be indicating various sources. So, and all of this, yeah, and so this is how you develop your annotated bibliography because you find these articles, you do little summaries and, and work from them there. Grace, a question? Did you have a question? Will you be you providing to... a list of um, current government inquiries to select from? Yeah, there's a have a, have a look in week two. That's open, um, and you can see what's current there. And and thank you for that question because we're just about to look on that now. Um, so there it is. There, um, that's from the uh, Parliament uh, of Australia, the federal Parliament. And you can see that there's a button there called Parliamentary Inquiries. And these are current inquiries underway that the Senate is conducting. Senate ones are usually interesting because Senate is not dominated by one political party. It's kind of, and so they've got to negotiate it. 
And so you will have some liberal, some Labor, some Green, some some of the teal for no, they're not in the Senate so much, but certainly those parties that are in the Senate will form the committee. So it means it's going to have a wider scope. So um, there's some there. So there's the Senate ones. Then there are the House of Representative ones. And then there are the joint committees, which is both the House and the Senate. So you can see then I've just picked out the first one. OK, under Senate committees, under the Community Affairs Reference Committee. And I'm just going to click on that link, say, and this is issues related to menopause and perimenopause. And that's entirely suitable, for example, because it's due on the 10th of September. Um, now, the key thing is terms of reference. Always check the terms of reference and see whether that's something that, yeah, is interesting for you. And, and there's a list of some other ones that are available at the moment and what the terms of reference is they set the parameter right it's going to be doing this going to be looking into this particular question and it'll have several or maybe 20 terms of reference you don't have to deal with every one or you might find that um, a reference if you're particularly interested in aboriginal issues you might find that there is a term of reference which uh, is particularly um, relevant for um, your 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 in, in your area. So, for example, issues related to menopause and perimenopause. For example, you might be interested in the question. You might want to write a develop a submission on the question of period shaming in indigenous communities. For example, right? so that might be and that gives you space. So, it might not be particularly about. Uh, Aboriginal and First Nations peoples, but it's something that, but there might be one of the terms of reference that that picks up on on that. So just to give you a little bit of, of leeway, as you can see there, there's already one on cannabis. Uh, it's already come up tonight. Uh, uh, the media inquiry, that's right. If you're really interested in environmental issues, you've got the fauna uh, extinction, residential electrification. If you're really interested in environmental issues, you could pick up on that, for example. Um, Cost of living and young people. Grace, another question. So the what we have to do is we have to pick an a current inquiry and find 10 to 12 APA references and explain how those references are relevant to the inquiry. Yeah, find references, yeah, and then yeah, APA just means the way in which the references are formatted. They're not specifically APA references. You're gonna find 10 documents and they might be databases they might be a chapter from a particular book um they might be they they might be they might be policy documents that already exist in certain uh, that are relevant but you want them to be timely uh certainly you know i wouldn't want to go if you're doing a policy document you wouldn't want it to be anything more than five years old unless of course it's what they what we call a seminal text and a seminal text is like, for example, a seminal text might be the uh, report of the Commission entirely into black deaths in custody. As I said 40 years ago, that submission, that Royal Commission was held. I knew people that were involved in initiating it. Um, and the initial agitation that got the Royal Commission happening, I think it was over a person called um, John Pat who was killed and uh, a group in Sydney called the Committee to Defend Black Rights started the agitation that led to the uh, inquiry. So that's a seminal document that's often quoted and it's more than five years old, but try and, yeah, try and keep it recent and have a balance. But if there's an issue, sometimes you might want to include something from the popular press to give a good indication of how it's portrayed. And you might want to include one newspaper report. So. Uh, something from a newspaper to try and have a variation of of, of academic and, and non-academic uh, literature. I hope that answers your question. Uh, and this will certainly Sorry. help. Me. Yeah. Sorry, so it's X, Y, Z states this. This is how it's relevant to the policy inquiry. I'll, I'll talk about that more next week. I'll go for and I'll, find, I'll show you some references on how to do uh, an annotated bibliography and and just some few little tips on that at this stage your 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 the key task is find 
something that's interest to you. Look at the look at the current inquiries, look at the terms of reference and narrow it down and then run it by me because I don't you, you're not doing a PhD or a master's or an honours thesis. You're doing, you know, you, you're doing a one unit in a community of Bachelor of Community Services. So I, I, I want to make it easy for you so that by, by keeping you on track uh, and, and, and helping to keep you focused rather than do a whole lot of work that's, you know, not necessarily going to be of benefit for your assessment. I hope that helps. Um, look, here's the um, here's the lib guide. You probably know about the lib guide from other subjects. Look, I just say one thing. I change all the time my content, so I, I can't guarantee that the lib guide will be accurate. So if you want to jump ahead, and that's why I only open one or two weeks at a time, um, because yeah, for various reasons. But if you wanted to jump ahead to whatever week, that's fine, because week eight might be, for example, on housing, you're really interested in housing, you wanted to look at the readings for housing, we'll go ahead and jump up ahead. But I can't guarantee they will necessarily be the readings that will be in the middle for that week, because as I say, I'm changing them all the time, and the poor librarian you know, can't necessarily keep up with my changes. Um, I hope that... Um, explains, but the Moodle is what you know what you need to know. But if you want to know, you know, if you need advice on anything, please don't hesitate, yeah, you know, to get in 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 touch. Um, yeah, I've gone over time. Sorry. So look, have a great week. Uh, next week we'll look at how your policies provide context for decisions and action around social welfare, and look what is poverty. Uh, look like so i've tried to sort of like make it relevant to your work this is something that you in impacts on your personal lives and also impacts on your you know your your professional lives as well um now i'll um unless there's any any other questions i'll um i'm going to stop the recording now and i'm more than happy to uh yeah take a few questions uh offline as well so i'm going to stop the recording stop